We all know about the major seven chakras. They're literally everywhere in mainstream culture these days. I mean, even Pixar has been telling us to open our crown chakra, right? But that said, how many of us are familiar with the minor chakras? In Eastern traditions, we find numerous references to the pathways and channels of energy in practices such as Tantra, Taoism, yoga, and many others, which describe that our bodies are filled with chakras, thousands upon thousands of tiny chakras all over the place, which work together to form our energy body of consciousness. Part of these teachings include the energetic pathways connecting our subtle bodies that are known as nadis, which can be thought of as the highway that connects each chakra and are what enable the flow of everything from consciousness to prana. Even in the physical body, the nadis are said to be channels that carry air, water, nutrients, blood, and other bodily fluids around the body and are similar to the arteries, veins, and capillaries. Now, the number of nadis of the body is claimed to be up to hundreds of thousands or even millions, but like many things, the interpretation varies hugely. In one text, the Shiva Samhita, there are said to be 300,000 nadis, with 14 of them being the central and most important ones. Of those 14, the three most vital ones that connect to the spine and are associated with the chakras are the Ida, the Shushumna, and the Pingala. Along the chakras, yogic philosophy speaks on the importance of directing prana into the Shushumna Nadi specifically, enabling the Kundalini to rise, bringing forth an awakening, which we've talked about in our episode about the Kundalini. The three main Nadis also embody our energetic polarities and help with the flow of prana into and out of the chakras. For the most part, Ida is associated with lunar energy and our divine feminine aspect. It's also a Sanskrit word that means comfort and is said to run up the side of the body from the pelvis to the left nostril. Pingala is associated with solar energy, something echoed in its meaning as orange or tawny and links with our sacred masculine. Like the Ida, Pingala runs from the right side of the pelvis up to the right nostril. Shushumna is the central nadi, often associated with the spine and in Swara Yoga is associated with both nostrils being open and free. While not specifically being gendered, perhaps we can think of this Nadi as a kind of divine child archetype. All in all, the Nadis work in harmony with our physical and astral bodies to facilitate the flow of energy between each chakra. And as long as they remain open, the energy will flow naturally and without blocks. You might even think of the chakras as pit stops or gas stations on the Nadi energy highway. Interestingly, we find a very similar concept in traditional Chinese medicine in the idea of meridians, where qi flows through them similarly to the nadis. In fact, the Taoist Qigong practice of the microcosmic orbit is very similar to the practice of nadi shuddha in Kriya Yoga. So much so that some schools claim the technique is taught universally in every age by an avatar of God known as Babaji. While the historicity of the techniques in India prior to the early 20th century aren't well established, it's fun to speculate about where they might've come from and why such systems are so similar. In practices like acupuncture, there are about 400 points, although some people argue there are more, given that some points are bilateral. Generally, the meridians are split into two groups of main points and are extraordinary points, which all correspond to pathways, organs, and a yin and yang energy nature that once balanced will allow the proper flow of qi into the body. In more modern new age circles, we find the idea of axiatonal lines that are pretty similar too. Generally, they create the energy network in the light body where all dimensional frequencies are translated into the meridians, chakras, and etheric body. These 12 vertical lines move throughout the entire light body running energy to the chakras. And much like the chakras themselves, each line has a corresponding dimension, chakra crystal, and frequency color. If you've ever seen a picture of an aura or energy body and see those egg-shaped lines coming out of the body, those are the axiatonal lines. Now, whether you consider each meridian or nadi point an individual chakra is up to you, but one of the more major of the minor chakras are the hand or wrist chakras. These are energy centers or vortexes present at, you guessed it, the wrists and palm centers. While often glossed over in a lot of discussions, these centers are what allows us to move energy through ourselves and into the outside world. So if you're struggling sensing energy with your hands, like in Reiki, the reason why might be blockages of the hand chakras. While not often talked about, these are potentially lower dimensional chakras that exist on the lower planes. That is the subtler microplanes or subverses between our physical world and others, but they form such a fundamental part of our nature nonetheless. Based on personal experiences, 
There is some kind of energy below the root around the feet that seem to act as a kind of bag for our past life memories and experiences that can be accessed when bringing all of the chakras into alignment, especially when working with higher multidimensional chakras. And hey, that's a conversation for another video. So we'll see you then.